Module 3, Speed Management. Achieving appropriate vehicular speeds for entering and traveling through the roundabout is a critical design objective. It has a profound impact on safety of all users and makes it easier to use and more comfortable for pedestrians and bicyclists. A well-designed roundabout reduces vehicle speeds upon entry and achieves consistency in the relative speeds between conflicting traffic streams. Operating speed is widely recognized as one of the most important attributes in terms of safety performance. In general, the frequency of crashes is most directly tied to volume, which makes sense. The more traffic going through an intersection, the more likely there is to be more crashes. But the severity of crashes is most directly tied to speed, and therefore why we are looking to reduce speeds as we approach roundabouts. The maximum entering design speeds based on theoretical fastest path. For single lane roundabouts, we want to have this theoretical fastest path less than 25 miles an hour. And for multi-lane roundabouts, we want to have it less than 30 miles per hour. Speed management is often a combination of managing speeds at the roundabout itself and on the approaching roadway. Studies have shown that reducing the vehicle path radius at the entry decreases the relative speed between entering and circulating vehicles and thus results in lower entering circulating crash rates. And what's shown here in yellow is the area where we want to have the speed reduced and that's our R1 which we'll talk about in a little bit. But as you can see it's where the pedestrian crosswalk is as well as the the yield line is just prior to that entering circulating conflict between vehicles in the circle and vehicles trying to get into the circle. We'll talk about fastest path. So the fastest path allowed by the geometry determines the negotiation speed for that particular movement. It is the smoothest, flattest path possible for a single vehicle in the absence of other traffic and ignoring all lane markings. Traversing the, through the entry, around the center island, and out the exit. Typically the critical fastest path is the through movement, but in some situations it may be a right turn. I want to be clear that this does not represent expected vehicle speeds, but rather a theoretical attainable speed for design purposes. So if you have a single lane roundabout that you've designed for 25 miles an hour, the fastest path does not mean that someone could not drive through that roundabout faster than 25. Again, it's just something that we are using for design purposes. So this exhibit from NCHRP 672 shows uh, the, the five different fastest paths, which include R1, which is the entry radius, R2, circulating radius, R3, exit radius, R4 is the left turn radius, and finally R5 is the right turn radius. So let's discuss construction of fastest path. Vehicle is assumed to be six feet wide and maintain a minimum clearance of two feet from a roadway center line or concrete curb and flush with a painted edge line. Center line of the vehicle path is drawn with the following. We're going to use five feet from a curb face, five feet from a roadway center line, and three feet from a painted edge line. The design speed of the roundabout is determined by the smallest radius along the fastest path. Here's an exhibit again from NCHRP 672 showing the construction of a fastest path uh, single lane. And as we discussed, you can see that we've got three feet here from, from a painted edge line, five feet from a face a curb there, five feet face a curb circulating, five feet as you exit, and again three feet from a painted edge line as you're exiting. Now, if you had a raised median for the uh, entire stretch through here, then you would have, again, five feet from the face of curb on the entry and the exit. So we'll take a look at construction of fastest path for multi-lane. So very similar to, to single lanes, all of the offsets and the dimension that we, we've used for single lanes hold for multi-lane. The only difference is that we are ignoring all pavement marking uh, and markings on the approach, circulating, as well as exiting. So we are looking for, again, 
you are a race car driver, you're driving through this multi-lane roundabout as fast as you can, you'd be cutting the corners as much as you can to get through that roundabout as quickly as you can. So this is how we would construct uh, the fastest path for a multi-lane roundabout. When we're looking at constructing of a right turn, again, same offsets that we're looking at. We have the three feet from a painted edge line, five feet from a face of curbing gutter, and again, either three or five feet um, on the exit, three feet from a paint line or five feet from a face of curbing gutter. Measuring entry path radius. The dash line uh, here represents the fastest path that we've established that we will establish. We're going to begin drawing that entry path at least 165 feet prior to the to the entrance line using those offsets that we just discussed. Then that R1 should be measured over a distance of 65 feet to 80 feet. It is the minimum radius that occurs along the approach entry path near the entrance line but not more than 165 feet in advance of it. What we're going to be doing is once we've got that fastest path established we are going to draw an arc over the top of it at the smallest uh, location, which is hopefully uh, near that uh, crosswalk area. And with that arc measured, then we can go ahead and determine uh, the speed based on that radius. Once we've gone through and we've measured that radius, we've drawn a line over the top of our spline, we can measure that radius and then we'll translate translate that into miles per hour and we can do that with the equations that are shown here uh, depending on the, the, the predicted speed is going to be based on on that radius that we had just measured and then the other factor is the super elevation so depending on how that curve to the right uh, into the roundabout is is sloped you may have super elevation with you or you may have super elevation going against you so the Florida Department of Transportation in the FDM has developed uh, some tools for this fastest path, and we're actually going to cover the slides uh, here on the next section. But I wanted to highlight that in, in 213 that you can click on here and get this fastest path tool. Not only are there the slides, but there's also a spreadsheet in there. And if you'll notice that it, it uses those equations, and you can go ahead and enter in uh, a radius that you've measured into the spreadsheet, and it's going to give you... Uh, two different different speeds here, and that's whether you've got the super elevation with you or super elevation against you. So in general, on entries, we're going to have the super assumed to be with you. On the circulating, where we're sloping 2% out around the circle, we'll have 2% uh, against us. And then on the exit, again, we'll in general assume that you have 2% with you. And as I had mentioned previously, the recommended maximum theoretical entry design speed for single lanes is 25 miles per hour and 30 for multi lanes. But we do try and get them as slow as possible. So if you can get it to 23, you know, 24, something like that, that would be great for single lanes. It doesn't have to be right at 25. So let's talk a little bit about the fastest path or the R3 for the exit speed. So when identifying the predicted speed for the exit radius, or this R3, the acceleration effects of vehicles may control. So locations with a large radius or tangential exit, as shown below, the measured R3 radius will be so large that the acceleration characteristics of the vehicle will govern the actual speeds. So there really will not be a radius there, and it will just be based on acceleration through there. So uh, here's, here's the equation. Uh, you can use the exit speed, which can be estimated by using this equation. Uh, that's going to take into account uh, a couple different things, which is the speed of V2, which is our circulating speed. And then it's going to be based on acceleration as well as distance. With all predicted speeds, the engineer is cautioned to look at the entire trajectory of the subject movement to determine what speeds are reasonable for each part of that trajectory. The speed environment leading into the roundabout may also govern speeds. So if you have an approach curve prior to the entry, that may uh, 
cause vehicles to slow down and that may be your governing speed control and an entry coming from a parking lot may have a lower speed than an entry coming from a higher speed roadway even with the same geometry so the example shows an entry coming from a, a parking lot area which is very low speed so therefore you may not be as concerned about uh, having a slow r1 at this location because you know vehicles approaching the intersection are already going to be going slow Another thing we want to have with our fastest path or roundabout design is speed consistency. And that is the consistency between speeds of various movements with the intersection can help to minimize the crash rate between conflicting traffic streams. So what we want is no more than 10 to 15 miles per hour differential between these all different five uh, speeds. And the R1, R4 relationship is typically the most restrictive. So we've, we've got our entry speed coming in and then we've got our R1 or R4, I should say, circulating. So it's this area right in here, the differential between, between our R1 and our R4 that many times are, you know, are kind of the most restrictive. But in general, if you're meeting the design standards of 25 miles or an hour or less for single lane and 30 for multi lanes, uh, you should, should be able to meet the speed consistency as well. So you go in and you do, you've completed your design and you've com now completed your fastest path checks and you found that your speeds are maybe too high on a particular en uh, entry. So that's where iterations with the design process uh, come into play and that is an integral part of the roundabout design. And it of often takes numerous iterations to achieve the balanced design objectives of uh, controlling your entry speeds, accommodating the larger design vehicles, and then providing natural entry and exit pass for multi-lanes. So this can get challenging if you're trying to accommodate a larger vehicle and, and yet still trying to control your entry speeds. So the size, location, and alignment are commonly at the heart of achieving adequate vehicle speeds. So one option would be to use a larger circle, but with that you would be looking at additional space and, and more right away. You could shift the alignment to the left. So as you're approaching the roundabout, you take the roadway shifted to the left of the center of the circle. But when you do that, you're going to have potentially higher exit speeds because you're going to have to straighten out those exits. Or you could use smaller entry curves, but potentially reduced capacity by using smaller curves. But probably more than that is the ability to accommodate the design vehicle. Uh, smaller radiuses oftentimes make it challenging to uh, accommodate those design vehicles. So we can walk through an example here of how to create these fastest path. Um, this example is in MicroStation and again these slides are in uh, the FDM 213. You can click on that link and get to these these particular slides. So we're going to take a look at this particular roundabout. So what we need to do is we're going to create those through the R1 through R3 fastest paths. We're going to do that through movement and we're going to create these these path offsets. So remember we talked about five feet uh, from curb faces or three feet from paint lines. So you can see uh, A here where we're going through and we're, we're putting in all of these these different offsets which are, are based on, that, again, that five feet from curb face or three feet from paint lines. We've taken the ICD, which is this um, curb edge of curb right here of that splitter island, and we're going to offset that 165 feet, and that's going to get our B line there. And the next thing is we're going to take that line and we're going to offset it another 25 feet to establish these, these other lines. And you're going to do that on both the entry, as I've shown here, as well as the exit over on this side. Then we're going to draw a spline curve. And in MicroStation, uh, we recommend using these the settings that are shown here when creating that, that spline curve. So you're going to go through and you're going to pick points a through I, and starting at the beginning, you're just going to do, you know, A, click A, click B, click C, and then you're going to put in a point at D, another one at E here, one at F, and then you're going to have the three, three on the end as well with the G, H, and I. So you can see once you go through and you click that these lines may not hit those offsets uh, just right, and that's when you're going to have to go into and use the modify spline curve 
And what you're going to do is you're going to pick points D, E, and F and move them around until, until you get that, in this case, this blue line to hit those offset lines. So then you're going to, after you've done that and you've, you feel like you're hitting all your offsets, you're going to step back and take a look at the entire spline to see if it looks like a path a vehicle would use. So basically you're a race car driver and this is the fastest path I could use to get through there. After you've done that, after you've uh, looked at your spline and feel that it is appropriate, you're going to go in and do the smallest best fit curves over uh, 65 to 80 feet. So again, you're going to be doing that in the area of the R1. So this should be right in right in this area. You'll draw an arc, your R2, you're going to draw one in this area, and then R3 on the exit. And you can see that this one is fairly straight and almost uh, pretty, pretty much a tangent through there. So maybe not much of an arc on that. But those are the, the three different spots that you're going to draw those arcs over the spline. And you're going to go in and then you're going to measure the radius. And in this case, our R1 at this location is 236 feet. And as we had talked about before, we're going to use our uh, equations to determine what, what those speeds are. So with the uh, R1 of 236, that equates to 29 miles per hour. So that was a multi-lane roundabout that we were looking at or measuring the fastest path for, which is less than 30 miles per hour. So therefore, that is an acceptable uh, entry design as far as fastest path is concerned. R2, we've gone in now and we've measured, and that one's 158. And again, we had mentioned previously that this one we're probably having the super against us, which leads to a slower speed. So that would be 23 miles an hour for 158 foot radius. And then our R3 is we measure it out and it's 665 feet, which that actually, uh, using the equation, is, is 43 miles per hour. But uh, we feel that, you know, that's not an achievable speed. So this would be a, a design where the fastest path where you're going to be looking at that exit speed or the R3 or the, the V3, the speed, you'd be using the equation. And this is where we had V2 at 23 miles per hour. We had a distance of uh, 114 feet to where that crosswalk is or where we're going to be measuring the, the V3 at. So you can go through and, and enter those values into, into that equation using the acceleration of uh, 6.9 feet per second squared. And that gives you a V3 of 36 miles per hour. So you're going to have to compare these and we'll look to use the smallest of these, either the measured 43 or the calculated 36. Uh, therefore, we would use the calculated 36 miles per hour for our V3 speed. Another thing we're going to have to do for, for each movement is create the, the left turn or the R4 fastest path movement. So we're going to measure the radius of the center island for, for that one. And typically, you know, you're again, that's just uh, measuring that offset. In this case, it's uh, our R4 is 70 feet, which translates into 17 miles per hour for our, our left turn speed. And then the final movement or check that we'll be looking at is R5 here, that fastest path. So very similar to the, the approaching one, we're going to uh, do our offsets. We're going to draw that spline curve. We're going to go in and have to modify that, probably moving point D around a little bit to, to make sure that it, it hits on all of our offsets. Then we're going to place an arc over the smallest part of that uh, spline, which hopefully is near the entry uh, in the circulating area right in, right in here. And then we're going to go ahead and, and measure that radius. And for this example, we've measured this R5 to be 106 feet. And very similar using that equation, 106 equals 21 miles per hour. So we've gone through and, and taken a look at all of, the, all of the speeds for the eastbound approach here. So you'll go ahead and take that information and put it into some sort of a summary table. As we had gone through our example, remember that the R1 was 236, R2 158. R3, uh, we're going to do that one based on acceleration, so that one uh, translates into 36 miles per hour. 
R4 was 70, and R5 was 106. So you can go through and take a look at the speeds that were calculated based on our fastest path checks. And you would go through and do that for each uh, entry of the roundabout. So I'm going to walk through a, a quick example here of creating the fastest path for an example. So I'm going to open up MicroStation in a second here and walk you through creating the eastbound through fastest path. How to develop the fastest path for, in this case, a single lane roundabout. Step number one, we're going to go ahead and offset our face of curbs. And for this particular example, we have longer splitter islands, so we're going to have a five foot offset so we, uh, from the from the face of curb. So again, we'll go in this poppy or copy parallel. We'll do our five feet. We'll zoom in in here and offset our face of curb five feet. We do that in the approach location. We've got our entrance here where we've got a, many times you'll have multiple curves in there. So offset that one. Face of curb around the circulatory roadway. Along the exit here, we'll have one. And then uh, down where we're gonna be tying it back into the uh, near the end there. So that's step number one was going through and offsetting all of the face of curbs, or it may be three feet from a, a paint line, depending on, on the situation. Next step is we're going to go 100 or go 165 feet. We're going to offset the uh, edge of the circulatory roadway or where the yield line is and establish this 165 foot offset. I'm going to just go ahead and extend that and then wrap it all the way around. After that, we're going to take that one and offset it another 25 feet to establish the uh, three points at the beginning. It also is going to establish the three points at the end that we want to connect to. Next step here is going to be to uh, create a spline. So underneath your create curves spline, so be splined by points. As I had mentioned previously, there are different settings. This is the setting. Uh, that we recommend that you use for creating that. I'm going to do a intercept snap here and zoom in on the first two. So this is point A, point B, and C. We're going to put one at D, E, F, and then again another three at the end to anchor that in, and then right click or however you have your mouse set up to, to complete that. As I had mentioned in the, the previous example, or the, the outline shows that your points aren't going to line up uh, exactly perfect, so then you'd go into your modify command, and you'll have the ability to go ahead and modify these different points, and you can see how that spline is, uh, you can edit it. So we're going to go in and, and get it close to the line here. We know we've got to bring this one down as well, get that one close. And you just kind of work your way around and getting getting that to where the line is just touching that offset. It's going to take a couple different little iterations. And um, I recommend you don't want to have, try and get this point, middle point lined up where it's kind of perpendicular to where it's touching. That seems to give the best, fastest path. So you can see that we're just touching there. And go back in here and very similar, lining this up. You don't want to do something way over here, something way over there. Get that smallest point or where your uh, PI is for the spline and get it um, somewhat perpendicular. And then you may have to go back to the entry here and take some of these and slide it, slide it down a little to be on the line as we did there. And you can see there. So now we'll go back in and modify this one slightly. And again, it's going to take a couple iterations to to get it to be where you've got a nice path hitting those offsets. And maybe just a little bit up here. And as you're Doing your conceptual design, you don't have to necessarily be as exact for your fastest path. 
Uh, but as you, once you get into your final design and you want your final numbers for your documentation, is where you'd spend a little more time and get some, some good fastest paths laid out. Next thing is now that we have a, a good looking path, I guess our next step would be just to, to look at it and make sure that it looks, if again, if you were a race car driver, how you would drive through the fastest that you could get there. And that looks to be appropriate and good. Now we're going to want to measure an arc uh, around 65 to 80 feet at the smallest radius point, which again, we hope to be right where that crosswalk would be. One thing I always like to do is draw in a circle just to help identify where I think that is going to be. It helps me identify the beginning and the end. So I'm going to place that there. So I know within this um, area, I can place my spline or place an arc. And it would be, I did a 35 foot radius. So this is a 70 foot uh, diameter. And I always try and get it to be around 66 feet. So we're going to go to uh, change our snap here. And I, the arc, uh, start, middle, end. And I can start the beginning. I can do one in the middle and then do one on the end as well. With the arc placed, we can now go in and measure that arc. We'll use our measure radius command here, and we get 134 feet. So I like to place a little note in there, letting us know what we measured, 135 feet. And we can do that. Now well, let's follow the similar, similar approach for measuring the R2. I'm going to copy that circle again, looking for the smallest arc along, along that spline. And it looks to be, it should be again, where that's perpendicular close to there. I'm gonna draw an arc over the top of it. And we'll go ahead and measure that. And it looks like we get around 95 feet for that one as well. Okay, now that we have our um, paths measured, we can go and figure out what the radiuses are for R1 and R2. R3 actually for this particular design looks to be very uh, straight out and pretty fast. So we know that that exit is then gonna be based on that acceleration calculation. So I'm not gonna spend the time to measure it right now, but I will determine what the, uh, the speed is for 135 as well as 95 for our R1 and our R2. We can pull up the uh, DOT spreadsheet sheet that's on the, uh, on the FDM on the website. And we can enter in this yellow box, the 135 feet. That gives us 23 miles per hour if we have the super with us, 21 if the super is against us. Again, on the entries, we're always gonna assume that it's with us, kind of the worst case, that's 23 miles per hour. So what I would do then is go into, into the spreadsheet or into the CAD file here, I should say, and just add in 23 miles per hour. So this file will be kind of our documentation and something that we'll be able to go back to. Now the next one is 95 and that's around, that's for our R2, 95 because the circulatory roadway is sloping out or away from the central island, we're gonna use the, uh, so kind of the super against us or the slope, slope against us. And therefore we'll use the 18 miles per hour for that particular one. Eighteen miles per hour for that one. Okay, so we've got R1, R2, we know R3, we're gonna figure out later when we calculate that. R4, which is uh, the left turning fastest path, is really just gonna be this offset line here. And that's 61.5. So I'll go ahead and copy this text up here. And we will say that is 62 feet. And then we can go back to our spreadsheet in here, type in 62. Again, we're going around the roundabout, meaning that it's sloping away. So we'll use 16 miles per hour for, for that one. Uh, 
All right, so that's our R1, our R2, 3, 4, and now the right turn is our R5. So that's the only one that's remaining. So we can go in and uh, let's draw the fastest path for that one. I am actually going to go ahead and turn off the, uh, the radiuses and all that for the throughs. So that will allow us to have that cleaned up a little bit. So what we need to do is we do need to go in and, and place some offset for some new lines. The south leg here does not have the splitter island extended as long. So therefore our offset is only going to be three feet from, from this paint line instead of the five feet from a face of curb. I'm also going to go ahead and offset this one a little bit more, or the X, one of the exit radiuses here as well. So now we've got our offset set for the, the right turn, fastest path. I'm going to go in and again, we're going to do, we'll do the snap here. We're going to do create a curve uh, or a B-spline, I should say, by points. So we can start at the beginning, pick on those three points. We're only really just going to have the one point here and then three points on the end. So there is our uh, spline placed. We'll go in and we'll do similar to what we did before, modify, but again, we're only going to have now this one point. And we're going to zoom in again on the design and have that arc hit that offset. We've got to check the beginning. Beginning looks like it needs to be brought down again a little bit, and maybe maybe this first point needs to come off that offset a little bit, but again, we're trying to no closer than that five feet to the face of curb. Modify our, whoops, modify our offset a little bit. Again, still trying to look at that, getting it as tight as possible or hitting on there. So our beginning looks good, circulating or around, I, sh I should say around the radius looks good. And then on the exit, we're hitting these three points. It doesn't necessarily have to be right on at that point. You could move it around a little bit if you wanted to. But for us, we're going to say that that's um, a good a good design that we've got. So very similar. I'm going to go ahead and place this circle where I think it's the smallest radius. And I think it's kind of in the same area there. And then I can go ahead and, again, draw an arc over the top of, of that. and then go in and measure that purple arc there. And I see that I've got 95. So I'm gonna place 95 feet here. Go to the spreadsheet, 95. Because we're making that right turn and the entry as well as the exit, as well as the circulatory roadway are all supered with us, we're going to use the higher speed, so therefore we're going to use 20, 20 miles per hour for, for that. Go in here and edit or add that uh, speed to it. And there we go, that is our R5 or the fastest path for the right turn. So I can turn our other other radiuses on here. And the through. And you can see that we've got 23, 18, 16, 20. Everything is very consistent in our speeds at you know only five mile per hour differential between them. So therefore we've got a you know a good looking design here. So that is the process for going in and creating the fastest paths following the Florida Department of Transportation procedures.